day, Grammy. How was your first day in Seoul? Ah, uh, great, great. Exactly what is that thing across the street? That monstrosity with the neon fan? Lonnie called it the Versailles of Northeast Asia. Can you believe they're adding an Olympic-sized pool on the roof? And an amusement park is going up and back. Talk about overkill. Said Carl, I wish she hadn't. Isn't it atrocious? Beverly loved that place, though. She'd get lost in it for hours. She loved the view from here, too. Whenever she stayed over, she'd pull the couch around so she could watch, she could fall asleep watching the lights. The two women stood at the glass as if hypnotized. The fan rippled its gaudy fins, and then a burst of jade green, goldfish orange, lotus pink, ivory, and opera marine. Korean letters, English. Korean and English. Lot world. Red Carla. Lotte world. Uh, Correct. Uh, quick. I wonder how you say that in Korean. Said Carla. Lotte world. Uh, no, seriously. Really, that's what it spells out. Lotte world. Uh. But does world well mean something in Korean? Like shopping mall, maybe? No, it's just how they spell the English word. Here, I'll show you. Here, I'll show you. Therewith followed a demonstration of hand gall. Within an hour, Carla was sounding out Korean words without having the slightest as to what they meant, and writing out English words in Korean characters. No, no, that's... that's not right. <laughs> That's square. a square, not a circle. Look at this chart I made you. In, not in. Said quick. Speaking of M, doesn't it seem sort of den in here? Said Carla, peering closely at the chart. Quick sigh. <sighs> Maybe we should stop. Here, carry the chart with you. You can learn as you go along. She folded it up neatly and handed it over and flicked it. To Carla. It's about time for the news on AFKN, she said, and went over and flipped on the two. She flipped through some Korean stations and a lit on a U.S. Army officer speaking sternly. Remember, stay alert, on base and off. There was a pause for station identification. Armed Forces Korea Network. A few more service announcements, tips on packing and moving, and then the local news anchored by uniformed personnel. Quick picked up two heavy stainless steel objects that Carla had noticed last night and began to heave them alternately over her head, churning like a locomotive, from which exercise Carla deduced that they were not objects dark after all. Quick and Carla listened to the news, exchanged some sympathetic gripes about the American political scene, and then Quick laid down the weights. Who are you observing? She asked. Hey, eh? You know, like what teachers, what classes, dummy? Oh, yeah, yeah, hold on, I'll get the list. Carla jumped up and ran down the hall to her room and rummaged about on the desk and came up with the list that Benny had handed her during the ride into Seoul the night before. Um, that reminds me, she said as she rejoined quick. What should I do about that stuff in the desk? Stuff in the desk? There shouldn't be any stuff in the desk. The two went back into Carla's room. Quick stared at the sheaves and scraps of paper. What the hell? This must be so news. And I told her to move her junk into the little room. She did, but she said this was yours. Said Carla. She did? Quick fingered through a few of the papers. Most of them were in Korean. They don't look like anything important. Advertisements and things. You can throw them away, I guess. Well, I won't worry about it as long as I think you don't have nothing you need. Anyhow, here's that list. List? 
of teachers that I'm observing for orientation. Oh yeah, let's see, who are you observing first? Patsy. Oh God, Patsy. Well, they either love or they hate her, as Lonnie used to say. The two walked back up the hall to the living room. Sam, a good guy, but keep him away from the soju. So what? Soju, Korean for lighter fluid. Oh, good, Eleanor Cross. Tell her you're my roommate. I'm afraid Eleanor's getting a roommate whether she likes it or not, and she won't. Is um, that the Eleanor that soon you went dancing with last night? Carla asked. That's who she went with, Eleanor? That's funny. The telephone jangled. Cook answered it in Korean, then said, Hello, Officer Joe. Hi. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you for checking. Yes, my sister left last night. Oh, that must have been my new roommate, Carla. Oh, yes, of course, we'll do that. Okay, thanks again, Officer Joe. Good night. She hung up. That was my friend, Officer Joe, down at the police box. He's been so nice to me. I've been a little paranoid since. I guess you heard about Beverly's being killed. Yes, Ben explained it to me last night. Oh, what did she tell you? Ask quick. Well, she said it was a typical Korean robbery. She seemed sort of pissed off at the Korean police. Said Carla. She did? Quick look at Carla. I guess it was typical. The thief would never have come in if there was anyone home. That's why the Korean tradition of never leaving your house empty. Did she tell you that Lonnie and I found her? Lonnie was your roommate and she left. Carla asked. Quick nodded. Anyway, that's why if you hear someone up in the middle of the night, it's probably me. Sometimes I can't sleep. <clears throat> right, no problem. If you want some company, just wake me up. Said Carla. Thanks, that's nice of you. Quick smile. And thanks for letting Soon You stay here. She should be home any time now. She seems nice enough. Talkative, isn't she? Said Carla. Quick rolled her eyes heavenward. She'll talk a blue streak. She tends to dramatize, though. I'd better hit the set. I'll leave a map on the table for you tomorrow for getting to work. I'm sure I'll be leaving sooner than you. Do you want me to mail these letters for you? Thanks, I'd appreciate that. The two women exchanged good nights and quick went to her room. Carla walked once again to the balcony window. The enormous clock across the street read five past twelve. A short time later, and Carla was again locked in her room, tucked in bed, this time doing a crossword puzzle. The mystery book still lay under the mattress. Once again, she fell asleep with the lights on, half sitting up. Her prized refillable chrome metal ballpoint pen clenched in a fist, resting on the puzzle. The next morning found Carla again embroiled in the subway, this time as a passenger. She was aware of a few curious glances, and a small child that could not tear his eyes from her had to be dragged past by his chiding mother. In the cluster of people down at the other end of the platform, she saw there was another Westerner, a pinkish fellow, and she noted that he, too, was the subject of interested looks. At that moment, a boxy train hove into sight, and people began to cluster into small groups as the train slowed down. The doors opened and Carla was being moved along by the crowd towards the door and in. The train moved off. She passed the time trying to decipher some of the advertisements. They arrived in Kangnam Station in short order and Carla debarked. Due to Quick's excellent directions, she avoided getting lost in what looked like an underground shopping plaza with a fountain, of course, and instead went directly to the freezing avenue. Turning off of this, she hurried up a steep, narrow, winding street bustling with pedestrians through which crowds small cars made their way by the simple expedient of never decreasing their speed.